You can think of the house as a rectangular glazed pavilion that's enlivened by these three timber cones. And each of those has a kind of multiple role, really. You can just see them as sculptural elements which anchor this very minimal building to the site, so like tent pegs, for example. But they're also used to enclose the necessary rooms. Uh, 16th century architect Palladio talked about necessary rooms, and so he would design formal buildings or formal salons that would be organised in the case of Villa Rotunda as a, as a kind of cruciform. And then there were some interstitial spaces, some leftover spaces. And he would label those necessary rooms. And I presume that's where bathrooms and kitchens were. I don't really know. But I like the idea that these cones might enclose the necessary rooms. And so one of them just contains a couple of fireplaces, but the other two contain a mix of bathrooms, kitchen, en suites and that kind of stuff. The house is used intermittently. I mean, it's owned by North American golfing enthusiasts. So there are certain things that allows you to do. You can take certain freedoms. So in that respect, there's a kind of element of cussedness uh, about it, rather than just relentlessly meeting everybody's want and desire. It's a very rich, sensual environment. We were very concerned to make it a kind of continuum from outside to inside to outside. Not that there would be easy flow, but that in fact, the house would really be a modification of the landscape rather than a kind of discrete object sitting within it. And again, you know, I think that that's part of the New Zealand experience, really.